Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. We have an amazing presentation coming up right away. Alex from GraphCore, please welcome everyone and join us on the virtual stage. We're so happy to have you. Hello, Good what's going on? Daniel, thank you very much for inviting me. Very happy to be here. Of course, I'll be here if you need me. Over to you. Great. So hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining. My name is Alex Siplikin. I'm the uh, manager for the AI engineering team here at GraphCore in the US. Today, I will be talking about predictive AI modeling in finance and insurance, discussing some of the machine learning models and use cases. Throughout the talk, please feel free to post your questions in the chat box here. Let me begin to... Um, by briefly introducing GraphCore. GraphCore is a semiconductor company. We have built a chip for machine learning from scratch. We call our chip IPU, Intelligence Processing Unit. It's a completely new architecture. It is uh, vastly superior than FPGAs or GPUs for many machine learning applications, both for training and inference. The company is over five years old uh, with over 500 employees globally. And we are extremely well-funded uh, trusted by renowned investors shown here. Our product is um, this 1U blade accelerator machine, IPU machine, IPM 2000, as we call it. It has uh, four second generation Mark II IPUs and it delivers one petaflop of um, AI compute. It can be easily added to an existing data center infrastructure. Um, Machine learning appears to be a completely unique type of compute workload, very different uh, from HPC, for example. There is a lot of parallelism in neural networks in the graphs with uh, millions and billions of connections, but also a lot of sparsity. Not everything is connected to everything else. And we need to map uh, these uh, graphs into 1D memory, uh, which is an easy, not an easy thing to do uh, you do not really need double precision compute and uh, low precision. An ensemble of low precision operations is what um, you need from uh, to get the predictions from the model. There is a lot of reuse of model parameters for recurrence or convolution. Um, and the static of the graph is typically, uh, the structure of the graph is typically static. There are a few trends in machine learning uh, that are related um, and important to finance and insurance. For, exa for example, for alpha estimation in financial modeling, we're seeing that the models are typically oversimplified because the data is very noisy or because the latency is very important. Uh, the most widely used models are linear regression and random forest, and those models are far from being ideal in terms of uh, effectiveness. Um, there are advanced, better models that we are going to discuss today. In NLP, um, there is a different trend. The model size has been uh, growing dramatically. The GBT-3 was uh, 175 billion parameters and it takes hundreds of thousands of dollars to train such models. So this uh, drive to increased accuracy <clears throat> means more model parameters, more compute, which translates uh, to more power, which ultimately becomes unsustainable too expensive. And there is a large um, interest in the community uh, to make models more parameter efficient. Uh, the challenge is that many of the new efficient models don't necessarily map well to traditional processor architectures. So a new approach is required to enable people to explore areas that they haven't uh, really been able to explore before. Advanced machine learning models require two kinds of compute innovation, higher level of parallelism on the processor and also um, much more memory bandwidth, moving data between the computer and the memory. GraphCore have implemented these innovations in the IPU, Intelligence Processing Unit. So in terms of uh, the parallelism, CPU is uh, designed for scalar processes. GPU implements so-called SIM T, single instruction multiple thread architecture. So um, it 
uh, it is uh, applying the same operation to elements of large vectors suitable for large blocks of dense contiguous data. And IPU is a massively parallel MIMD, multiple instruction, multiple data architecture. So it enables finer grain parallelism, which is needed to address the trends towards more efficient machine learning models using smaller kernels. In case of um, memory access, it comes down to where the model resides. So um, for CPUs, it's typically in the off-chip memory. Uh, GPUs use um, HBM2, high bandwidth memory on the same silicon interposer and some amount of SRAM, which is shared on the chip. Uh, so we can see a very good improvement in memory bandwidth. However, if we really want to maximize our memory bandwidth, we need to distribute our memory throughout the device local to each compute element. And that is how it is deployed on the IPU, where the model and data are held in tightly coupled SRAM right next to the compute. This gives us a huge step up in memory bandwidth, which translates directly to performance. This is the high level floor plan of the IPU. Uh, the compute cores are red squares and the memory associated with every core are these uh, rectangles. Uh, we have over 1400 of the cores running almost 9,000 threads independently from each other in parallel. And the memory bandwidth is over 45 terabytes per second. Um, in terms of the software, we call our stack Poplar, Poplar SDK. Uh, and we support high level frameworks such as PyTorch and TensorFlow, and also Keras, Hugging Face uh, as um, um, higher, even higher level. Uh, frameworks, I would say. So the graph um, gets ingested, built in PyTorch, and then ingested by Poplar. It would go through PopArt, Poplar Advanced Runtime, for example. And then uh, PopLibs, Poplar Libraries, would map the computation, the MATMALs or any other kernels or operations, uh, across the cores on the chip, uh, balancing the load to make it run efficiently. Uh, but um, as a, an, a researcher, an engineer, you typically wouldn't uh, have to care a lot about what's happening under the hood. The changes from GPU to IPU can be minimal. In this case, uh, it's a Keras model ported to IPU with uh, just three changes, importing the IPU-specific uh, Python modules, using the IPU-specific um, Keras uh, class, and then configuring the IPU system. Now let's consider a few examples of uh, models and use cases in uh, finance and um, insurance. In trading for alpha estimation um, and signal extraction, companies have been finding that classical methods are inefficient because the data is noisy and the relationships in the data are nonlinear. So uh, some algorithmic trading companies are switching to the Markov chain Monte Carlo method, which is very valuable because the predictions of the model are distributions over potential outcomes, not just point values. And the same with the weights of the model. So this notion of uncertainty built into the model helps avoid overfitting while dealing with nonlinearities on noisy data. And it allows the model to better reflect the volatility, the characteristic of the market. So researchers can get much better insights into how the market is behaving. Um, let me try to describe the computations behind this method. Imagine we have um, a set of observations, such as features and returns over time. And we have a predefined modal architecture, uh, something like uh, a simple neural network. We need to infer the weights of the model given the data. MCMC methods typically employ some kind of random walk in the space of model weights. For um, neural networks, it would be like thousands of parameters. So there is um, Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, which is a better suited scheme 
in the MCMT realm for high dimensional uh, cases. So you can imagine for HMC Hamiltonian Monte Carlo, um, hockey puck sliding without friction over a surface, being stopped at some uh, point and then kicked uh, in a random direction. Uh, so the puck would be making these tiny steps. For every step, you need to compute the slope, the gradient of the surface to update the momentum and the position of the puck. And it is a sequential computation. You can make only one step at a time. For such computations, the bandwidth between the compute and the, uh, the compute cores and the memory is critically important. And the good thing about HM HMC is that it produces these nice uh, samples from the distributions of model parameters that we can use for predictions. There is a problem, however, because, um, because of uh, the sequential nature of uh, this algorithm, it is quite slow. It can take hours or days to run on CPUs or GPUs. And MCMC has been long considered too computationally expensive and impractical using traditional technology. And to efficiently deal with this, we need something different, something with a higher bandwidth between the memory and the compute. Um, on IPU, it runs much faster, as you can see. The time to result is much, much smaller. In this case, um, MCMC was implemented using TensorFlow probability, an off-the-shelf high-level framework. Um, this experiment took 48 hours on GPU to, um, uh, in terms of time to result. And on IPU, it takes about three hours. So instead of waiting for two days, you can get results in, in the afternoon. And this model, this specific example, is available in our public um, GitHub repository so that you can replicate the results. Another example, another model, uh, which is uh, widely used, is uh, LSTM, long short term memory uh, based models. Um, these can be leveraged for financial time series analysis, feature extraction, alpha estimation, stock price forecasting, fraud detection. Um, so LSTMs keep an internal state based on observations. Um, and for example, random forests are not efficient at that. So LSTMs are much more powerful models. And um, LSTM is a recurrent kernel, recurrent layer. It reuses its parameters for every element in the sequence. And this improves parameter efficiency compared to fully connected layers, for example. And this algorithm uh, as well benefits from the huge memory bandwidth on the IPU. One of the relevant examples that I would like to bring up today is this work by the researchers at Oxford Mann Institute, Stefan Zoran, Zihao Zhang, uh, they are using historical data on limit order books to predict price movements given uh, for a given stock or index. Their work has been featured in press. For example, Bloomberg mentioned it in their article, as well as on Bloomberg TV, where it was one of the most viewed uh, videos uh, that day. Their model architecture uses convolutional and LSTM layers. Um, they have trained their model on GPUs and IPUs and have observed at least a 10x improvement in time to train on IPUs. For build world data sets, that would mean reducing days of training to a handful of hours. Uh, let's dive a little bit deeper into this use case. This is a visualization of a li limit order book state uh, or dynamics actually. At the top, you can see orders from market players that would want to sell their stock asking for a specific price. And at the bottom, uh, you can see orders from the players who would like to purchase stock at a lower price. Depending on the balance between bid and ask orders, the effective price of the stock can move up or down. This picture visualizes the dynamics of limit order book over time. The time here is on the x axis and the y axis uh, shows the volume of ask and bid orders at the upper half of this chart and then the price uh, for bid and ask in the lower half the authors are analyzing the top 10 levels of the limit order book 
for each side bid and ask. And as you can see, there is some structure in this visualization of the normalized limit order book. The volume of the bid orders here on the left uh, is relatively high. And apparently this results in price going up as more people want to purchase the stock. So the authors, authors have uh, built a model to analyze such data and predict future price movements. They do it at different time horizons. In this uh, paper, we are discussing from just 10 ticks in the future to uh, 100 ticks. The model at the first stage extract, extracts features from the limit order book data and then processes the sequence of those features. Convolutional layers at the beginning of the graph of the model leverage principles that come from uh, computer vision and image processing. And then the LSTM layer is used to model longer time dependencies. The prediction that we want from the model is whether the future return will be above or below a given threshold, or it will stay neutral. The model uses an encoder-decoder architecture. Given the historical limit order book data, the encoder produces the context C which is used by the decoder, which is based on an LSTM layer. Given this context, the decoder produces predictions for several time horizons, one at a time. In this sequence to sequence variant of uh, the model architecture, previous predictions for shorter time periods inform future predictions as shown on this slide. And the other variant of the model architecture is based on attention. It uh, appeared to be even more efficient, more accurate than the sequence to sequence model. In this case, the context um, vector for the decoder is created based on the hidden states from the encoder and the previous hidden state of the decoder using the attention mechanism. Uh, attention mechanism can sound complicated, but it actually uh, as simple as taking uh, dot products of these H vectors and using the results as weights after normalization to aggregate the encoder hidden states. So shown here. After that, we produce a prediction for the first time horizon and repeat the process for this new state, new hidden state of the decoder, creating new context vector and moving on with the predictions. As shown here. So this is the final model architecture and this is the overview of um, the building blocks of the model. So we go th through the convolutional layers on the left through the LSTM to uh, build the context vector or vectors, and then the decoder uh, generates the predictions. This is it about the second example and second use case today. And the third, the last use case is in the field of uh, image processing. Insurance companies and hedge funds using are using images when processing claims, for example, or analyzing market activity from satellites. Uh, we know that state-of-the-art computer vision models use group or depth-wise convolutions. Um, as we have seen, uh, 42 out of 50 top, um, uh, out of top 50 published results on ImageNet use uh, such uh, kernels and ResNext and EfficientNet are the leading backbone architectures. Uh, the difference between regular convolutions and group convolutions is shown on this slide. You have an image of or activations from the previous layer with a specific number of channels. The regular convolution applies a kernel to all the input channels, while the group convolution uses only a, a subset, a group of input channels. So it is a finer grain operation that would require more flexibility from a processor. 
On IPU, the training of efficient net-based models can be done more efficiently uh, when comparing to the most advanced GPU A100 with uh, 80 gigs of HBM memory. And the price performance advantage is approximately 3.8 times. Efficient net is one of the models used by Tractable, one of the fastest growing and innovative uh, technology companies in the insurance vertical. And I would like to say a few words about what they uh, do. Tractable leverages AI to accelerate accident and natural disaster recovery. They do it by connecting the policyholder, the insurer, the body shop or contractor, and making the way they collaborate and get the car or the house fixed a lot more efficient. Their systems look at the photos of uh, the damage and decide first if the car can even be fixed or should it be just salvaged. If it is to be fixed, they can figure out which body shop it should be redirected to so it could be fixed most efficiently. Once in, the car is in the body shop, they can help the body shop decide what types of parts it should order, where it should order it from, and also align with the insurer. Their processing pipeline uses several machine learning models. For example, efficient net-based models are used to process images um, with potentially an attention-based model ingesting the resulting representations from the efficient net different images. They have evaluated graph core against the current training regime and saw a 5x speed gain. And that means that an experiment that takes a week to run now will take a day. So researchers can potentially run five times more experiments and the company can accelerate the whole research process. This way Tractable can fulfill their strategy to build world-class AI teams and enable them to be as efficient as they can by giving them the best available tooling and hardware. Three minutes left. Thank you. The GraphCore product line includes a series of scale-out solutions shown on this slide. You can start with just one IPU M2000 with one petaflop of compute and then easily scale to four IPU machines as shown here. We call this configuration IPU pod 16 since it has 16 Mark II IPUs connected together with IPU links. And you can target a pod 16 from TensorFlow or PyTorch uh, as one accelerator running data parallel or modal parallel. The larger unit is pod 64, and you can scale um, further to thousands of IPUs. At GraphCore, we have built a new kind of hardware that we believe will allow innovators to create the next breakthroughs in machine intelligence. This is an entirely new hardware architecture that is specifically designed for AI and machine learning workloads and is particularly available, favorable for the advanced higher accuracy models that the future of machine learning is leaning towards. This is all from me for today. Thank you very much for joining this talk. Please stay in touch. I'm happy to answer any questions over email. We have a lot of information on our website, including the cases, sorry, and models mentioned by me today. Feel free to follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. And we are actively hiring for our engineering and sales roles. So let me know if you know someone who might be interested. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex. A big virtual round of applause for him. Everybody else listening, go do some networking and I'll see you at the next session. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you.